Hello, I'm Dr. Douglas Jones, TDR entomologist with Bear Crop Science. This is Bug Talk. Okay, well, we're here today in a soybean field just north of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, up close to uh, uh, Ithaca, and we're looking at a what looks to be a very healthy soybean field. However, when we move down in and start looking at the edges here, we start seeing a lot of dead plants. And this is likely due to uh, the effects of the soybean gall midge. So today with me, I have uh, Dr. Justin McMahon from the University of Nebraska. And I was gonna ask Justin, uh, you know, what can you tell us about gall midge? Is it uh, uh, something that we really need to be worried about? Yeah, yeah, standing around a field like this, yes, it's something to be worried about. And, and we have maps online that show parts of the state that are infested. Not every field looks like this. Um, you know, we'll look at another part of this field in a minute where you think nothing's wrong with the field until you really start digging around. Uh, but soybean gall midge is a new species, so we, we know very little about this species at the moment, uh, but we're certainly becoming very familiar with its capability to cause a lot of injury in a field. Uh, and this is just one example where we see this, this significant death effect at the edge of the field uh, that this, this type of, of damage will get, get a producer concerned and a phone call. Uh, a lot of the fields we're seeing uh, probably aren't going to be seen until the end of the season or in the next couple of weeks if we get a lot of heat. So. Uh, uh when we first look at this field, we think there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, what what should a farmer be doing to uh, decide whether he's got a problem or not? Yeah, you know, uh, the, the, one of the few good things about this insect is it's an edge infesting pest. And so if you step just a few rows into your field and you start to see any signs of death in the plants, identify plants that are wilting or still green and healthy, uh, and then you can lean over and, and it's not hard to, in a space like this, those plants will crack at the soil level, you know, like a lot of these are, and, and just pick one up, and, and it does not take much uh, to start seeing the orange larvae that are in those plants. Now, throughout the course of the season here, these larvae will abandon the, these plants and uh, fall to the soil surface, especially orange ones like the one at the tip of my finger there. Uh, they'll fall down into the soil and then pupate and emerge as adults again. Uh, we, we know we're going to see probably two a series of adults this year and probably a third. Uh, whether or not it's important, we don't know, but uh, that's, that's the easiest way. And, and the diagnostic feature is finding those larvae. Dead and dying plants won't tell us that it's okay. so much. So one other question here. Um, what can we as a farmer do uh, to try to head this problem off? Yeah, we, we tried a lot this year. Uh, 17 different studies. Lots of them were geared towards management for growers. Uh, we were not successful in completely controlling gall midge with any of those. Uh, so this is a multi-year uh, thing, but we're, we, we learned a lot this year. Planting date has a, a very large effect on soybean gall midge, at least for the overwintering generation. So those that were following, we saw the first adults in June 14th. Uh, and uh, they really bumped up a number quickly and then declined, but they declined gradually over about a 24 day period. That's a really long emergence period. Uh, very hard to control with the foliar insecticide. Uh, but it appears that planting June 1st, which won't get anybody excited, uh, limited the infestation to 3% when we evaluated in July. Uh, so a, a June 1st or June planting uh, next year combined with maybe seed treatments or foliars, for those that are really heavily impacted by this, might be as close as we get for now uh, until we learn more about this insect. This could also be a, an unusual year where we saw an extended emergence, and maybe if it piles up a little bit more, we might have better chance with some foliage. All right, well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for watching us today on Bug Talk. Thanks for watching this video from the Gothenburg Water Utilization Learning Center. For more information, please call 308 537 4500.